The decarbonator is the next generation in heated soak tanks. It is manufactured from the highest quality materials and meets the standards for ETL certification as a dishwasher. Although the decarbonator works 24-7 and never switches off, it uses minimal energy because it is fully insulated. The decarbonator decarbonizes, degreases, cleans and sanitizes. No other kitchen equipment is able to achieve this with such a minimal effort. The decarbonator is very well crated and packaged to prevent any damage during transit. The crated decarbonator can easily be moved using a pallet jack, dolly or a forklift. Remove the folder from the lid and then carefully remove the cardboard packaging. The folder has the owner's manual, Carbonzyme MSDS and installation DVD. At the back of the unit, next to the left hinge, is the serial plate. Fill in the model number and serial number located on the serial plate onto the owner's manual. Keep the owner's manual in a safe place. Open the lid of the tank and remove any boxes of Carbonzyme. Store the Carbonzyme in a cool, dry place. Remove the drain hose and attach it to the back panel using the velcro strap. The hose with the adapter is used for the monthly draining. Once the contents have been removed, lift the tank off the crate base. Depending on the model, use two or more people to lift the tank off the base or use a forklift. Be careful not to damage the power cord grip at the base of the tank when inserting the arms of the forklift. Notice the H2O fill line on the back panel of the tank. This is where the water level should be maintained at all times. The lifting basket has two handles with horizontal slots in the side arms. The basket rests on the brackets located on each side by locating in the slot. The basket is used to facilitate loading and unloading by engaging at various levels. Laminated operation instructions in English and Spanish are strapped to the back of the unit. Locate the decarbonator on a flat surface, preferably in the dishwashing area and within six feet of a floor drain. Once a suitable location has been found, the casters can be locked. The decarbonator can now be filled with water, preferably hot water because then the decarbonator will reach temperature very quickly. If hot water is used, the tank will reach 185 degrees within a couple of hours, compared to five hours when cold water is used. Make sure that the ball valve is in the closed position. Stop filling when the water reaches the H2O fill line. Always maintain the water level at this line by filling with water periodically. Plug the power cord into an appropriate outlet. The circuit must be a dedicated circuit. Do not use an extension cord. Switch on the power by pressing the green switch to the on position. The power light and the heater light will switch on. The decarbonator should be on at all times. It works 24-7 for a full month at a time. Do not switch off even if there is no equipment being cleaned. The heater light will switch off when the optimal temperature is reached and switched on when it is below temperature. The majority of the time the heater light will be off because the decarbonator is very well insulated. The fill indicator light indicates when the monthly drain, clean and replacement of carbonzyme will take place. At the beginning of each cycle the refill indicator needs to be reset. Press the black reset switch on the right end cap and hold for a few seconds. The reset indicator will flash green a few times and then flash red twice. Once the light flashes red, release the reset switch. The light will remain green for a month. The carbonzyme can now go into the decarbonator. Open the box or boxes of carbonzyme depending on the size of the unit. Pour the entire contents of the box or boxes into the water 
being careful not to splash. The number of boxes that go into the unit each cycle depends on the model size. Refer to the owner's manual or to the operating instruction charts. Stir up the solution by raising and lowering the basket. This will ensure that the carbon zyme is dissolved in the water. On the larger models, use a paddle to stir the solution. Now the decarbonator can be filled with equipment. The basket can be raised to facilitate tank loading, especially for smaller items. Place the equipment onto the raised basket. Larger items can be placed into the tank with the basket already lowered or partially lowered. Now gently lower the basket into the decarbonator. Fill the decarbonator with as much equipment that can fit in, as long as it is submerged in the solution. Initially, the water is hardly discolored, but will turn progressively darker as the carbon buildup is removed. Do not drain the solution for one month, even when the water discolors. Any items that come out of the decarbonator are fully sanitized and bacteria free because of the temperature. Items removed need to be thoroughly rinsed to remove the residue detergent before use. Remove food from equipment just by scraping before placing in the decarbonator. A pre-wash is not necessary. Once the tank is filled with equipment, the lid can be closed and the equipment left to soak. The lid should be closed at all times. The decarbonator cleans a wide variety of items in the kitchen and is safe on aluminum. Burners, grills and stove parts that are heavily carbonized should initially be soaked overnight. The carbon, if not removed, will be softened and may require scraping to remove the superficial carbon and then require a re-soak. Dryer baskets and strainers are very delicate and can easily be damaged during regular washing. Hood filters should be cleaned first thing in the morning because they clean in about 20 minutes. Ideally, filters should be cleaned daily to maintain a cool kitchen, reduce airborne fog, fat, oil and grease, and minimize the risk of fire. Plastic cutting boards should be the first item cleaned on the first day of the cycle when the water is clean, and for only about 20 minutes. The decarbonator is aluminum safe and cleans sheet pans very effectively. Carbon deposits on equipment in layers over time, and the decarbonator strips away at the layers similar to paint stripper. Exposure to the atmosphere, that is the oxidation process, facilitates carbon removal rather than leaving the items to soak for longer. Once the heavy carbon is removed, all subsequent soaks will be dramatically reduced. Wherever possible, rather use the decarbonator than the three compartment sink or dish machine to save water, labor and chemicals. If an item has water in it when removed from the tank, be sure to pour the water back into the tank. Any fat, oil or grease that accumulates on the surface should be collected regularly and thrown into the trash. The water level may drop over time. Always maintain the level at the H2O fill line with fresh clean water, preferably hot water. Gloves should be used at all times because the water is hot and steam can cause severe burns. The decarbonator has special friction hinges that make the lid stiff to open initially so that the steam will escape. Always be careful of hot steam. For a month at a time, the water remains in the decarbonator. The refill indicator will remain green for the entire month and when it turns red, it will indicate that the monthly refill is due and that the carbon zyme needs to be replaced. When the refill indicator turns red, switch the green power button off and unplug the power from the wall. Allow the decarbonator to cool overnight before draining. Once the solution has cooled, the draining can take place. Any fats, oils or grease that is collected on the surface of the solution can be collected and thrown in the trash. Remove the hose that is stored at the back of the decarbonator. Undo the clips of the connector to release the adapter. 
and then screw the adapter into the drain valve. Connect the hose to the adapter and secure the clips. Place the end of the hose into the floor drain. Raise the basket to the highest slot so that it is out of the solution. If any equipment remains in the tank, this can now be removed. Spray the basket with water. Remove the basket and clean in the three compartment sink. Now open the drain valve completely. While the tank is draining, the outside of the tank can be cleaned thoroughly. At the bottom of the tank is a trough where the carbon and fog accumulates over the month. This is collected and thrown in the trash. Attempt to collect as much sludge as possible before rinsing. Once most of the sludge has been collected, water can be sprayed into the tank. Limescale buildup can sometimes occur opposite the heater. Use a sharp scraper to remove the crust and make sure that this area is thoroughly cleaned. Models 120, 250 and 500 GAL have two heaters, one on each side. Scrape opposite the heaters, front and back, in these models. Thoroughly clean the inside and outside of the tank. The basket can be cleaned and replaced. Close the drain valve and disconnect the hose and adapter. Store the hose at the rear of the decarbonator using the Velcro strap. Now that the decarbonator is clean, it can be refilled with water. Fill the unit with clean hot water to the fill line. Add the appropriate boxes of carbonzyme. Plug the power cord back into the wall outlet. Switch the green power switch back on and then reset the monthly timer. Depending on the operation, type of facility and kind of equipment being cleaned, the basket may be too heavy for one or two persons to lift. Provision for a hoist is provided on the 85 and 120 GAL models. This can be added by sliding the hoist in and bolting to the base if required. Lifting items out of these models becomes a one-person operation. Sometimes a power surge can cause the machine to shut down. A manual reset switch has been provided to reset the system. Before performing the manual reset, unplug the power cord. At the back of the unit is a square plate below the warning label. Unscrew the plate. Insert the pin provided and press firmly. Typically, a click will be heard when the reset switch is reset. Plug the power cord back in and check if the problem has been corrected. If not, then call for service.